Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So I'm going to get started shortly. I just want to wait for a couple of people to tune in before I get started. Again, welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. I want to encourage people to follow me on Twitter at New Poss Blog. Also, I want to encourage you to like my Facebook page, New Possibilities. And also, for those of you who are into reading, I want to encourage you to like our reading club, our book club called Reading as Activism. We meet on the last Saturday of each month and we meet through Zoom. We are going to be discussing the book entitled Black Top Wasteland by S.A. Cosby. I encourage you all to read the book. It's probably an easy read. It's a thriller. Uh, and all the books that we read are books by African Americans or, well, Black people, you know, throughout the diaspora, not just African Americans, but Black people throughout the diaspora. And we read some books by others uh, that deal with topics affecting Black people. So I encourage you all to like that page. Again, that's Reading as Activism. So I just wanted to bring you all this brief live stream. Uh, today I was on Facebook and I came across this article about Candace Owens. And I had to share this with you. Uh, in the future, I may do these types of videos on my I Declare War channel. It's been a long time since I've done videos over there. But I plan to, to start doing more videos over there where I address people like Candace Owens and others. Uh, so my main channel, New Possibilities, is not filled with uh, me talking about these types of people. But I just want to first share a couple of stories with you and then provide my brief commentary. So let me share my screen. And before I do so, I want you to let me know if you can hear uh, fine. If you can hear me, please throw up a seven in the chat. I just want to make sure the audio is fine and that there are no issues before I continue on with this particular live stream. I see that I have a couple of people tuning in. I realized that it's late, so I may not get that many people, but if you can uh, put a seven in the chat to let me know if the audio is fine before I proceed forward. Again, if you can hear everything fine, uh, put a seven in the chat. That way I'll know everything is a go before I continue with the actual commentary. In the past, I've done um, live streams and later on I found out that there were problems with the audio. So I want to get that out of the way uh, before I continue. So if you can throw a seven in the chat room, I would appreciate it. Okay, so I assume that everything is fine since I, uh, you know, no one is complaining. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen Okay, I see Covina man indicated that there's everything's good. So that's great. Thanks for tuning in. So as you all know, on Saturday, um, two LA sheriff's deputies were shot in an ambush. And I'm gonna read a couple of excerpts from CNN. And then I'm gonna show you the story involving Candace Owens. It says, um, you know, it talks about how authorities in Los Angeles County are still looking for the suspect, the man who shot two LA County Sheriff's deputies. It says that each deputy suffered multiple gunshots, including the head and the face. Uh, it says that they got through surgery well, uh, each expects to recover, but it's going to be a long road to recovery. Uh, right now, there's a award being offered or a, a reward being offered for anybody that uh, identifies the suspect. There's actually video footage of the suspect shooting these two officers. 
And right now they are offering $175,000 to identify the suspect. Uh, And these funds were raised through private donors. And I was watching Fox News uh, just a second ago on on YouTube, and apparently the um, sheriff's department wants to encourage um, uh, LeBron James to actually donate to this fund uh, to help capture the suspect. So let's see. Um, And this goes on to describe how the the shooting took place. It says the shooting happened shortly before 7 p.m. Saturday at MLK Transit Center in Compton. Uh, The gunman walked towards the passenger side of the deputy's vehicle, raised a pistol and shot both deputies. And then there's this surveillance video here. I'm not gonna play it. Well, actually this is a photograph of the video. Uh, In the other article, um, there's the actual video, but I won't be playing it for this live stream. And this article points out how Donald Trump and Biden condemned this shooting that took place. So that's a summary of what happened. And now I'm going to show you this article about Candace Owens. Now, what you have is Candace Owens trying to blame this LeBron James. So hold on one second. Yeah, so you have a shooting and you have this this person, Candace Owens, trying to blame the shooting on LeBron James. And I'm going to get into what she had to say. Uh, I'm going to show you this tweet that she put out. Um, And this article is in the description box to this live stream so that you all can read the article for yourself. But here you have her blaming uh, Black Lives Matter and LeBron James. So this is what she put out on Twitter. Uh, She said, why does this happen? And then she goes on to say, because pea brain celebrities that are idolized like King James tell young Black men that they are literally being hunted. This is the natural result of such hyperbolic dishonest rhetoric. And then she said, the racist, anti-police, Black Lives Matter lie is to blame. So she's blaming Black Lives Matter and she's blaming LeBron James. And I'm gonna go to LeBron James tweet so that you'll see the context of what we're talking about. This is the tweet that she's basically using to try to blame LeBron James. So back in May, LeBron James put up this tweet. He said, we're literally hunted every day, every time we step foot outside the comfort of our homes. Can't go for a damn jog, man. Like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? No, are you, you know, kidding me? And then he goes on to talk about um, Ahmaud Arbery. You know, he says, I'm sorry, Ahmad. rest in paradise and my prayers and blessings sent to the family. And then, you know, he has this um, this photograph of Ahmad Arbery. And you all remember what happened to Ahmad Arbery. This is a brother jogging in the neighborhood. And these people, this these groups, this group of white men assume that this brother is some kind of burglar. They um, you know, accuse him of burglary. They decide to follow him in a pickup dr- truck. You know, a father and s- white father and son follow this brother in a pickup truck. Both of them are armed. And you had his third person following him as well from behind and, you know, videotaping this carnage, videotaping this lynching of this brother. They stopped this brother. Uh, one of the people in that pickup truck gets out. The son, you know, the younger white man gets out and there's a struggle. And then this white man proceeds to shoot and kill his brother, Ahmaud Arbery. So this is what LeBron James is talking about. A man simply jogging is suspect simply because of the color of his skin. His skin is a badge of criminality in the minds of these racist people. And we have, you know, the example of Trayvon Martin. 
we have so many other examples of young black men and women being killed by the police and killed by these white vigilantes or non-black vigilantes. Uh, so I can understand why, you know, somebody like LeBron James will make such a statement because every other day you're hearing about another black man, mo more likely than not, killed by these police. You know, whether we're talking about, um, you know, all these different cases, you know, whether it's George Floyd, whether it's uh, Rashard Brooks, whether it's, um, you know, Breonna Taylor, constantly hearing another hashtag. And then you had a brother, Jacob uh, Blake, shot seven times in the back. Now this brother is paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of his life, more likely than not, because of a cop. And all these people um, were unarmed. You know, they did not have firearms. And all these people, you know, were ended up being injured or killed by the police. So I can understand why this brother would say this, why he would talk about the black man and, you know, black woman being hunted when we leave our houses. You know, whether it's, um, you know, somebody calling the police on black people just for doing everyday activities or it's just police terrorism or vigilante terrorism. So this brother had a point when he put this, this tweet out here. He was talking about what happened to Ahmaud Arbery and all these other countless black people being killed by the police. But nowhere in that tweet did he condone violence. I have never heard uh, the brother LeBron James advocate violence against the police or against anyone, period. So for this woman to make a, a leap from a statement condemning police brutality and racism to conclude that this happened because of LeBron James is absolutely ridiculous. It, it has no bearing in reality. Uh, it is a classic example of scapegoating a celebrity. And this is just another example of this woman clout chasing. This is just another example of this woman trying to use celebrity names to bring attention to her own name. That's what she's doing. And, you know, since she finds the need to, to ride these black celebrities for no reason at all, I'm going to ride her until the wheels fall off. You know, every time this woman puts out something ridiculous, I'm going to be there to go in on her. And, you know, the day, um, you know, for a while I took a break, you know, from the I Declare War channel and stuff like that. I haven't been, you know, going as hard on these people but that's going to come to an end soon. So you all look out for more videos on my I Declare War channel because I will be addressing people like this. And it won't be as civil as this conversation is right now because these people don't deserve civility. You know, this is a clout chasing attention whore, man. That's basically what this woman is. She will do anything to keep her name in the news to stay relevant. And I encourage these celebrities to just ignore this woman, to just ignore her and let people like, you know, people like me and the bloggers go after her. Let us deal with her um, because this is what she does. And it's just a shame that you have black men on YouTube who defend this woman. You got black men that actually, sent, you know, these people that talk all this red pill talk and all this stuff. These are the, and you know, they talk about how people shouldn't be simping. These same people are the ones that be simping for this woman. A woman who's married to a white guy, a woman who has no respect for black people or black men, period. But yet and still, you see these, these red pill guy, quote unquote, red pill guys simping and caping for this woman. This woman that has no respect for black men. So, and then she blames, um, Black Lives Matter as well. I mean, Black Lives Matter has nothing to do with this. Uh, you know, there have been articles out that talk about how Black Lives Matter. I mean, first of all, Black Lives Matter, um, as I've said many times before, goes beyond just the organization Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter, the organization doesn't condone violence against police. 
They don't, as an organization, they don't. And most of the demonstrations that we see against police brutality are nonviolent, despite all the rhetoric that you will hear from Fox News, despite all the rhetoric and campaign ads that you will see um, from Donald Trump. The fact of the matter is that most of these demonstrations are nonviolent. And I'm going to share an article with you. Uh, just bear with me a second. I'm going to share an article with you um, about this situation, you know, about how most of these demonstrations are nonviolent, despite all this rhetoric that you hear from these right wing nuts uh, trying to make everything, make it seem like Black Lives Matter condones violence. So if you can bear with me a second, I'm going to pull that article up. Uh, because this, they could play this completely false um, narrative out here. Speaking out against police brutality doesn't mean that somebody is can obviously doesn't mean that somebody is condoning violence. So just bear with me a second. I'm going to try to pull up this article. Okay, I found it. Um, let me share my screen. And I will get to your comments. I was supposed to be doing some work tonight. And I will, I'm probably gonna have to do it first thing in the morning. But I had to talk about the story. So here it says, you know, and this is um this is from The Guardian. And it says nearly all Black Lives Matter protests are peaceful despite Trump's narrative. And it says the vast majority of thousands of Black Lives Matter protests this summer have been peaceful, with more than 93% involving no serious harm to people or damage to property, according to a new report tracking political violence in the United States. And it says a new data on protests and the U.S. government's response comes from the armed conflict location and event data project. And it goes on to say an organization has, that has long tracked political violence and unrest in regions around the world, together with Princeton University's Bridging Divides Initiative. So there you have it. Like, despite all this rhetoric that you hear from these right wing nuts like Candace Owens, Black Lives Matter uh, is not a violent organization. The protests are, for the most part, like over nearly all of them are nonviolent. You have, you know, a few uh, protests that turn violent. And many times in these protests that turn violent, a lot of times, you have agent provocateurs among the people there to do nothing but cause trouble. You know, people that aren't even uh, a part of any organization or really a part of the movement there to disrupt. And I'm convinced that some of these disruptors and these agent provocateurs uh, probably work for the federal government, probably are helping out the Trump administration. So, I mean, this, this idea, that um, Black Lives Matter and LeBron James have anything to do with this is absolutely preposterous. It's ridiculous. And it's another example of how morally bankrupt this Candace Owens clown is. You know, it's another example how she will do and say anything for uh, media attention. And let me share this. I'm going to show you, show my screen. Uh, of this article that I cited. Let me just do that again real quick um, so you all could see the, the article and the source. And I will post this in the description box. Again, this is from, um, from The Guardian and it's titled, Nearly All Black Lives Matter Protests Are Peaceful Despite the Trump Narrative. Uh, so that will be in the description box so that you all could check it out. 
But yeah, you have this woman presenting this false narrative, you know, distorting things. You know, she type, talks about um, something being hyperbolic, but that's all this woman does is uh, use hyperbolic and dishonest rhetoric herself. Knowing good and damn well that Black Lives Matter as an organization and most of the followers do not condone violence. None of them are calling for the shooting and killing of police. Because if they did openly call for that, most of the leaders would be in jail right now. Uh, they would be in jail and all that kind of stuff. And they know that somebody like uh, LeBron James, a respected black man who's not only accomplished, accomplished on the basketball field, but who has given back to his community, who has you know given scholarships and done all kinds of great things in his community. And you got this, this parasite this right wing parasite trying to leech off of his name and, and ride his clout to bring attention to her name. And it's just despicable what kind of person this is. This is a woman who will do anything um, to win the good graces of her, her uh, white slave master, man, of the, the right wing. And then this, is a, this woman is a phony. She's a complete fake you know, pretending to be some kind of conservative when she never was a real conservative. I mean, this woman, uh, again, as I mentioned before, um, she talks about, you know, now she claims that racism is not a problem in society. But yet when she was in high school, she ran two civil rights organizations. Now today she condemns those same civil rights organizations that she relied upon when she was in high school. This woman, um, you know, talks about how much she supports Donald Trump today, when before she had a website, a blog attacking Donald Trump. This woman is a clown. This woman is a joke. And it's just hilarious that these white conservatives have been bamboozled by this con, con artist. Um, and it's just a shame. Man. And, and, you know, a lot of people um, think that because she can speak well and she's articulate and all that stuff, and she's a passionate speaker that somehow um, she has credibility. This woman is a joke. Uh, there is a reason why even somebody um, like Donald Trump wouldn't have this woman at speak at the national Repub the Republican National Convention. There's a reason behind that. Um, she epitomizes um, what it means to be a mammy. You know, you remember those images from Gone with the Wind or the, the Mammy character. There was uh, Yessa Bossin and Yes Mammon and, you know, shucking and jiving and, you know, tap dancing and all jolly and happy to serve the white man and the white woman. That's Candace Owens. That's who this woman is. And I just find her to be despicable, man. And it's just a shame that... Um, if somebody like this gets so much attention. So like I encourage these celebrities, I don't know, I mean, they probably not checking me out on this channel, but if they can hear me, I would tell them just to ignore her. Like, you know, by Cardi B, for instance, engaging this buffoon, all she did is help raise Candace Owens' profile. And then this reminds me of another story that I wanna talk about briefly, and that's Kanye West. Like. Kanye West has helped to promote this woman as well, using his celebrity to hype her up. Kanye West has, um, is one of the people to help get her on the map because he says something to the effect of, uh, I like the way she thinks. So a lot of people who had no idea that this woman existed learned about her through Kanye West. So I'm going to share this quick article about, I think I have it here. Um, with Kanye West talking about this woman. Um, I think it's, just bear with me one second. I'm gonna pull that up and then I'll go to your questions or your comments. Yeah, so here it is. Let me share my screen real quick. 
So you got this guy, Kanye West, helping to promote this woman. And it's like, part of me just wonders, is it really time to cancel Kanye West? I mean, how many times um, must this guy coon, tap dance, and all that stuff before we finally just say enough is enough? You know, I like him as an artist. I like his music. Um, you know, cause I'm a big fan of hip hop. But it's like, at some point, you're going to have to cut people off, man. So, um, so this article from News One says Con Kanye West thanks Candace Owens for Democratic Plantation book after their Blackxit beef. So a while ago, they had a disagreement over Blackxit and you know the branding of certain products and all that kind of stuff. But apparently, he's made up with her. Um, and this is the tweet that he put out. He put out this tweet. Let me close this up. Yeah, so he put out this tweet saying, thank you, Candace Owens, because she has this book right here called Blackout. Let me see if it'll come up. Yeah, this book called Blackout and it says how Black American, a Black American can make its second escape from the Democratic plantation. So he's helping to promote this woman. Kulti, so I'm gonna look at your comments and later on I will edit out the long pause where we had these technical issues. I'll take that out. Uh, so I wanna thank you all for tuning in. I'm gonna look at your comments and provide my response and I'm gonna edit out the, the bad part of this, this live stream. Shout out to everyone in the chat room. Shout out to Covina Man. Shout out to Elaine Lloyd. Shout out to Eiffel. Thanks for tuning in. Cohen Davis asked, where did America think this was going to go? Yeah, and one thing that I want to say about that is that like right now, we don't know what happened. We don't know who this person is who shot these police officers. We don't know what their motivation was. So like my whole thing is like, wait till the person is apprehended before we make any kind of conclusions about motivations and you know what inspired this person or whatever. Yeah, so Elaine said, um, I wouldn't think that any black man would support <laughs> Kondas Owens. But I know black Trump supporters, so I can't be surprised. Uh, T-Boy said that Candace Owens is a lost cause. At this point, her main purpose is to be a, um, <laughs> a conservative chew toy. <laughs> Hold on one second. So Psycho asked what did Candace Owens do now? She blamed LeBron James and Black Lives Matter for the killing of that um, LA, you know, those LA sheriff's death, well, the shooting of them. They're not dead, they're injured. They're in the hospital and they're recovering. So she blamed that shooting on LeBron James and Black Lives Matter. Yeah, so Candace, um, yeah, so Elaine Lloyd said, uh, Kanye's not canceled yet. <laughs> I've been like, you know, I've done several videos critical of him, but I haven't straight out canceled him. And, you know, it's probably time to cancel that guy, like it stop buying his music and stuff. Because um, he's just coon too much. I mean, and I could just run through some things that he's done. First of all, he was selling selling uh, Confederate materials like, you know, uh, branding his his uh, designer clothes using Confederate symbols and stuff. You know, then this guy said slavery was a choice. This guy said um, Harriet Tubman didn't free any slaves. 
Uh, this guy, you know, praises uh, Candace Owens. This guy praised Donald Trump and made a complete fool out of himself when he visited the White House. This guy, um, you know, actually did a video, you know, a video where he was calling for models to participate. Well, actually, it was like a, a fashion show, if I'm not mistaken. And he was asking for um, only uh, women who are of mixed heritage, meaning that he didn't want any black women uh, participating in this this modeling cast uh, for some of his clothes or whatever. I mean, so this guy has a long history of cooning. You know, as many people know, he's been referred to as being in the, in the sunken place. You know, people like him and Candace Owens are in the sunken place. So yeah, I mean, this is just a continuation of a lot of things that this man has said and done um, to the detriment of his community. And um, Ebony said that um, Candace is an absolute joke. She came to London thinking white men will embrace her mentally unstable rhetoric. Yeah, again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties earlier. Um, yeah, so I've read that they, those uh, sheriff's deputies are recovering. You know, it's a long road to recovery. Um, I, from what I recall, um, they're, I think they're in stable condition from what I read. Yeah, and it's, it's just funny how, like, you know, this Candace Owens is blaming um, LeBron James for the violence, you know, and blaming Black Lives Matter for what happened. But she doesn't have that same kind of condemnation towards the president and his rhetoric. You know, rhetoric, for instance, uh, calling those, those terrorists and racist bastards in uh, Charlottesville, some very fine people. She don't, doesn't have any problem with that. She doesn't have any problem with people like Donald Trump and, you know, right-wing media like Tucker Carlson um, defending that guy, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, who shot and killed two people and shot a third person. She has no problem with that. She has no problem with the Republican national convention inviting two people that pointed their weapons at nonviolent Black Lives Matter protests. But yet she wants to pretend like she is condemning violence. Like she wants to pretend that she's so outraged and that LeBron James is the cause of the violence that uh, we have um, seen in, in LA County. But she has nothing to say about these Republicans that encourage violence by encouraging people to arm up, by, you know, people like that Coon Sheriff uh, from Milwaukee, who was, what's his name? Um, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, that sheriff who basically was encouraging people to arm up and be ready to, to uh, defend themselves and shoot people and all that kind of stuff. She has no words of condemnation for that Coon Sheriff um, but yet and still, she wants to pretend like she's so outraged um, because of LeBron James just pointing out facts that black men are hunted in this society. Um, how many more examples does this woman need to see to realize that? You know, whether we're talking about Walter Scott shot in his back and killed. You know, he was stopped over something so minor and so irrelevant, like stopped over a broken tail light or something. And the brother ran away because he had he owed child support. And because of that, that brother ends up dead, shot in the back multiple times. And we had an example of Eric Garner, a man who was stopped for allegedly selling some loose cigarettes. Like, you mean to tell me a black man's life is worth less then a couple of loose cigarettes. This brother ends up getting choked out, choked to death live on camera and no charges have been filed against these police. Nothing has happened to these police uh, who were responsible for that brother's killing. And then you have uh, George Floyd 
The police had their knee on that brother's neck for over eight minutes, despite his pleas that he could not breathe, despite pleas from the crowd that had gathered. And you got this this buffoon, this coon trying to pretend like black men and black people aren't being hunted by these police and by these white vigilantes. When every other day we hear about another black person killed by these people. And I'm sure that before this month closes out, you're going to hear another hashtag, another black person killed by these police. But yet and still, this woman wants to pretend like it's hyperbole to talk about black men being hunted and killed in this country when that's what has been going on from day one, from the moment we came to this country in slave ships. You know, all those lynchings that took place where black people were the strange fruit that Billy Holiday sung about. And these people were entertained by black suffering, entertained by black lives being taken. They would view the lynching of black people as some kind of sporting event, as some kind of source of entertainment. They would gather their families and their, their children even to witness these horrific crimes being committed against black people, black people being hung, black people being burned at the stake and all that kind of stuff for these people's entertainment and their enjoyment. Black people have been hunted from the beginning. And then we go to today, you know, these times where these police feel free to kill black people and there is no justice in these situations too often. Too often these cases don't even go to trial. Too often when they do go to trial, these police walk away after murdering black people. And some of these police get uh, treated like heroes in the words of Pac for killing a, a Negro, for killing a black man. They get treated like, like heroes, like those police that killed Freddie Gray here in Baltimore. They received some kind of uh, award from some right-wing group after that. But this woman wants to pretend like um, black men and black people aren't being hunted. So somebody asked, why doesn't LeBron James speak out against uh, the killing of police officers? And maybe he will, like maybe he will speak out against that. Perhaps he will uh, speak on that issue. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Um, you know, so I think it's premature to be talking about why doesn't he do this and why doesn't he do that? This shooting happened on Saturday. Um, and I'm more likely, more likely than not, um, he will be speaking out. And this person apparently is a troll, but I'll entertain him for now. Uh, this person said not one person in Charlottesville was a racist. That's the dumbest comment that I ever heard. How are you going to say that when white supremacists were there, when Nazis were there, when people like David Duke were there, when, you know, all these racist people were there with their swastikas and their, their symbols of hate. Only an idiot would say something like that, or a troll, somebody that's here to troll. And somebody said like only 200 pe black people were killed in the United States by the cops. Cite your source, post a link, if that's the case. And even if it was quote unquote, only 200 people, that's a lot of people being killed by people that were supposed to protect and serve. That's a lot of people being killed. You know, people like if, if, if 200 people were killed in your neighborhood, you wouldn't say, oh, only 200 people were killed. If, if Black Lives Matter went out and butchered 200 people in some white neighborhood, you wouldn't be like, oh, it's only 200 people killed by um, you know, only 200 white people killed. People speak like that when they don't value black lives. I mean, what kind of person in their right mind would say only 200 people? That's a lot of 
people being killed. And this goes to the case in point. I mean, this is just another example. Either this person is an ignorant black person or a, another one of these white races. Because only a white racist or, or um, a black sellout would speak, say something like this. Only 200 people have been killed. Do you not value human life? I mean, that's the dumbest thing that I ever heard. And, you know, these people just cite these sources without any kind of proof at all of what they're talking about. So I'm just going to block that person. I don't believe in, um, you know, this is not a safe pet place for trolls. If you are here to troll, you will get blocked. Your comments will be deleted. I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> I mean, I have no problem having a, a logical debate with anyone. I'm prepared to debate anyone on substance. But when you come to troll, when your only in pur purpose here is to antagonize things and to uh, start conflict, you have to go. Yeah, and this woman, Candace Owens, I mean, she is a grifter. I mean, this woman is just completely selling out, doing whatever she can do to, to make money and to bring attention to her name. Because how else can you explain this woman making these drastic changes in what she believes? One day she's some liberal that hates Trump and the next day she's some conservative out here campaigning for Trump. This woman just has no, res no uh, class, no kind of self-respect at all. You know, and I, I was on Facebook and somebody put up, um, you know, I posted this article on my personal Facebook page and somebody was saying, well, um, you know, that this woman is an attention whore, you know, a media whore or whatever. And then you had somebody say, well, don't call her a whore. That's like disrespectful. But that's exactly what she is, man. She is for sale. She um, is about selling out to these white supremacists to promote their agenda. You know, this woman even heaped praise upon, you know, like even though she tried to wiggle her way out of it, she had words of praise for somebody like Hitler. This is what kind of parasite we're talking about. Exactly, T-Boy, that's 200 too many. Like what? It, what is this person talking about? And you know, the numbers, the even if the numbers were quote unquote low, when you look at the the percentages, you know, of black men being killed um, that are unarmed by these police, it's still a huge problem. When you have black men making up only six percent of the population, but they're 40 percent of the unarmed people killed by police. There's a problem there. Yeah, so I want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, you know, I appreciate it. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Um, you know, I appreciate your, your comments and you adding to this conversation. Uh, again, I want to apologize for the technical difficulties. I don't know what caused it. But hopefully next time things will be straightened out. And again, I want to remind people that I will um, be doing videos on my I Declare War channel. If you go to my channel page, you will see us um, like feature channels. And I encourage you all to subscribe to that channel. I want to dedicate that channel to talking about people like this Candace Owens clown and others um, responding. I'm going to try to. Um, focus primarily just on the issues and making logical uh, responses to these people breaking down what they're actually saying. Uh, so I want to encourage you all to subscribe to that channel. I will be back over there um, posting videos regularly. Um, so yeah, I want to thank you all. Please rate, comment, subscribe, like the video, share the video, 
hit that notification bell so that you'll know when I post new content on here. And I want to let people that are watching now know that there were some technical difficulties. I'm going to edit out those technical difficulties. And, um, you know, I hope that you all can bear with me. Subscribe. Peace and blessings, everyone. Have a great evening.